Hello and welcome back to the series on named entity recognition for the purposes of the digital humanities. In the last video, we looked at how to do some kind of custom training of a custom entity. In our case, it was a concentration camp. I know in the end of the last video, I mentioned that I was going to start talking about how to load in some custom word vectors for a domain and then use that model with those custom word vectors. I got just a little bit ahead of myself. What we need to do first is we need to understand how to take components from other models and add them into a new fresh model. And the reason for this is because it is sometimes very useful to reduce the complexity of a problem from a multi-class classification problem into a binary text classification problem or a, um, a series of cascading binary problems. Let me explain what I mean by copying and pasting in what we looked at in the last time. When we looked at this sentence from last time, what we saw was the model that I had trained on the 3500 annotations was able to successfully identify both Majdanek and Treblinka as concentration camps. However, that model didn't have any other vital entities built into it. He could only see the world through a lens of concentration camps or not concentration camps. This means that important and vital metadata was missed, and that's expected because we had, didn't give the model any other abilities to identify any other pieces of metadata. If we had, that would be known as a multi-class classification pro uh, problem. So uh, being able to uh, find multiple classes or multiple entities in a text. So for example, it missed things like Lakva, Lotz, which are places, Warsaw, we're going to build ghetto in Warsaw into the model as well. Uh, but we didn't find things like Poland. We also missed important things like organizations such as the United States Holocaust Memorial Museum. We didn't get probably one of the most important pieces of metadata, persons, and probably the second most important, dates. All of these things are vital pieces of metadata and vital pieces of named entity recognition. And it is very difficult to collate enough uh, training data that a model can be trained on all these things simultaneously. And so for that reason, it's really good to understand where your limits are and what data you have accessible to you and how to kind of overcome that. And that's where knowing how to take pre-trained models, utilize certain components of them and add them into a new model is absolutely essential. So let's go ahead and work with that right now. So what we're going to do in this video is we're going to import Spacey, as we always do. And our goal in this video is to take the uh, the standard English model, uh, the small model that Spacey offers uh, on their site. We're going to take that model, and our goal is to add to it our concentration camp NER component. And what we're going to do is we're going to do that in a few different steps. I'm going to intentionally introduce errors into this process so that you can see where common mistakes are made and know how to overcome them. So let's go ahead and just jump right in. This is going to start off the same way we do everything else, except I'm going to say main NLP. I'm calling this object main NLP because I want to keep control over which object is the is my main model, the one I'm trying to add things to. So I'm going to say main NLP is going to be equal to spacey dot load. And we're going to just simply say what we always do in core web SM. That's going to load in the small model. And then what I need to do is I need to get this concentration camp model over here. The one that I had pre-trained off screen. So to do that, I'm going to do the same thing as I did up here. Just have a different name for the object. I'm going to say conk camps NLP. And that's going to allow me to keep that object separate. And I'm going to load in, just like I did with the English small model, load in that model. And I can do this because it is sitting in my main directory. If I didn't have it in my main directory, I would have to um, go to the actual location of this model. So what I can do now is I can grab the NER component. And the way in which we do this is we would create an object called NER. And I'm going to make that equal to conk camps underscore NLP. So I'm grabbing that model right now. I'm going to pass in the argument get pipe. And that's going to allow me to determine what pipe I want to get. Now, if we notice in this model over here, I'm going to open it up and explore so it's a little easier to see. Our conk camp model didn't have a special name for its NER. It was just called NER. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and grab that NER component. So I've got it right now. Fantastic. And now my goal 
is going to be to add it to that um, uh, to that main NLP. So I call that main NLP object, and I say add pipe dot add pipe, and I'm going to pass in two arguments right now. I'm going to add to this in a second. And you'll see. I'm going to add in ner, and I'm going to add in names going to be equal to conk camp ner. So what I'm adding here is I'm adding a pipe to that main spacey model, the uh, this one right here, the the small model. I'm adding in the pipe. I'm telling it to add the ner component that I've grabbed from the conk camps NLP model, and I'm giving it a special name, conk camp ner. This is to differentiate it from the main NER of the model. And now I can use this and ideally what I'll see is I'll see both the entities from the main model and the entities from my NER component, both active. Again, I'm intentionally introducing an error right now. And he says can't find concamps NLP. Why is that? I might have introduced the wrong air, uh, conk camps NLP, and that's because I didn't call it the right name. It was conk camps model. Now what we should see is not necessarily an error, but bad results. And here we go. So if we look at these results in the output, we do in fact see bad results. Everything is what we'd expect from the small model. It's found things correctly, but it's missed things. It hasn't, for example, identified what we wanted to, to identify. It didn't identify Majdanek or Treblinka as concentration camps. Why might that be? Now, you might be thinking to yourself, maybe it's because I haven't actually successfully added the pipe. But in fact, you have. And we can prove this by saying uh, main NLP dot to disk. And we're going to make call this model. Uh, we're going to call it main model. And if I were to run this again, we will see that I do, in fact, have everything in there installed correctly. Here's the main model. We see conk camp NER added. We see NER there. Both components, both pipes are present in our pipeline. Why then are we not seeing the correct output? Well, here's where we make a common mistake. You have to think about a pipeline as a series of cascading tasks that um, where earlier pipes have primacy over later pipes, unless specified with the overwrite um, argument. So how can we ensure that our pipe has primacy over the uh, main NER so that we can ensure that our model gets first dibs on what to label? It's quite simple. We can either use the before or after um, uh, our, uh, keyword arguments here, and we simply tell it where to place it before. So in our case, we want to place it before the NER component. You can also use after if you know what comes before the NER and you want to play something afterwards. You can pass an after and it'll make sure to assign it after. By default, when you add a pipe to a spacey pipeline, it's going to put it at the very end. So this is a very common mistake that is actually quite easy to overcome. And now we get our second error. And this is another very, very common error to get. And it's also one that's easy to overcome, but difficult to figure out if you don't know what you're doing. This error is not very clear. It's a value error, and it's telling me that it can't look up the thing in the string store. It's, this looks very difficult if you don't know exactly what this error means. You could probably Google it and find an answer uh, pretty easily, but even then it might still not be entirely clear. Let me explain what's happening here. In order to explain this, we have to go again into our meta JSON file. So this is the Explosion AI's uh, meta JSON file that they have. And if we go all the way down, we'll eventually get to uh, the string store, maybe very, very far down, parser, let me find it here, labels, and this is where we're going to eventually get to uh, being able to see this, we're going to find the NER uh, components, here we are, the NER components, basically, it's got all of this stuff in there, um, but it doesn't have the ability to recognize uh, what actual, oh, there we are, there we are, the strings. I was in the wrong uh, section. What it needs the ability to do is to understand that concentration camps is in fact a label. So it needs to actually have this added into its string store, long story short. The way in which we do that might not be entirely clear immediately, but it's quite easy to do. And I'm going to do this by creating a blank list. 
So we're gonna say new vocab. This new vocab is simply going to be the new labels that the standard off the shelf spacey model isn't used to. So it's not used to conk camps as a label. We need to add that into the string store. So let's add that label in. And the way in which we do this is we create a list. We don't have to create a list. I am doing this because we are going to be adding in more labels to this string store than just conk camp. You'll see that in the next few videos. So what we're going to do is we're going to just create a very simple loop. I'm going to say for item in new vocab, and we're going to say main uh, NLP dot vocab. So we're going to grab the vocab, we're going to grab the strings, and then we're going to add, and we're going to add the item. What that's going to do is it's going to introduce this new label into the vocabulary so that it knows really kind of what to do with it. Because when the spacey model's encountering it, it's not having a clue what a conk camp is. It doesn't, it knows that it's part of the NER component or the conk camp NER component, but it doesn't know exactly what to do with it because it's not experienced it before. And by doing this little bit of code, you'll find that now we have no error whatsoever. And also by adding it before the NER, we're seeing that our output now shows our concentration camp model, that binary model now coming into play prior to the main NER. If you look at the output here, you'll see Majdanek and Treblinka both correctly labeled in this context as concentration camps. So that's how we add a, take a component from a previous model and add it into a new model. What we're going to be doing over the next few videos is taking this very simple exercise and making it much more complicated, but in a good way to do much more complicated and sophisticated and robust things with the NER component of Spacey. That's going to be it for this video, though. Stick around. In the next video, we're going to start making a more complicated model that uses Eastern European models and uses their components. And then what we're going to do in the video after that, I'm going to show you how to create custom factories so that you can actually control the output of those other components. If that doesn't make sense now, it will in a few videos. Thank you for listening. And if you've enjoyed this, please like and subscribe down below.